Everybody, we are back. It is Tape Don't Lie, favorite Raiders podcast, favorite Raiders channel, favorite, you know, Raiders everything, right? Every, everything Raiders over here. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the subscribe button, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you uh, hit the like button, hit the like button, give us some likes. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. We need all engagements. You know, if, you, if you're not uh, liking the video, leave a, leave, a, leave a comment. If you like the video, leave a comment. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, check some of the breakdowns we did uh, the last couple of days. I mean, some of them have been on fire. I mean, B, B's on fire over here, man. Mr. Mr. Flame Hot, so just bow with the videos. <laughs> Clacking up the views. So, uh, you know, um, let's go ahead and check out one of the, the, uh, that video and the Alex Leatherwood video I just dropped. Go ahead and check those out. You know, we got some merchandise for you guys too. We got some merch now, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and check out that merch down there. You know what I'm saying? In the links, you know, the links in the bio, right? <laughs> That's what they say. Link, oh, link uh, in the bio. Okay. Uh, yeah. the, the links in the bio, right? Uh, you All right. Yeah. Bio. It's the details. The links in the details. So right. know, go ahead, get the link down there. You know, go ahead, check out some of that merch. Go ahead and get you a shirt, a sweater, a baseball shirt, whatever you want, whatever you like, you know, and then uh, you like always, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL. For me, I'm Marcus. And then you got at BD Williams 18 for my man, BD Williams. All right. So today we're just going to be covering, you know, some preseason week one review. So, you know, we, we, we grinded the tape for you guys. You know, we got the tape grinded. It's grinded out. I'm ready to give you that good information. So how you feeling, BD? Yeah, man, I'm feeling good. You know, we, um, we were able to dissect the the film, so you know, uh, I'm coming from an informed place right now. Yes. Yeah, you know, so I, I think that that is that is good. You know, when we do the instant reaction, you know, you have that you have some gut reactions, and that's what I love about watching film is yeah. you you had some gut reactions, and sometimes they're right, but sometimes you get proven wrong when you actually see the eye in the sky and and you take a look deeper, you know, deeper dive into it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's what we're going to share today with, with the listeners. Uh, we appreciate, you, you know, you guys for clicking uh, download on this episode, clicking, you know, like subscribe, everything like that. So why don't you jump into it, Marcus, hit us up, talk to us about what happened with the offense. Um, you want to talk about Peterman first? Can you tell us, you know, some good things, some bad things you saw from Peterman? Yeah. So uh, talk about Nathan Peterman. I thought Peterman started off the game really well. Uh, he came out aggressive, made some big throws at that, that throw that he made on the double go concept uh, with the Raiders love. I mean, Nelson Aguilar scored about three touchdowns on that concept last year. So they really liked that double go concept. So he was able to fit that ball into a really, really tight window. There wasn't a lot of room for him to fit that in. And he had a great throw. So uh, he started off the game really hot and then he had another throw on some four verticals. Um, you know, said it, add a little stick knob at a 12 personnel. So they have the two tight ends out there, which they had out there a lot. They had they're in 12 personnel heavy that whole game. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So they were uh, running that 12 personnel four verticals. They really like running those in the red zone, right? You're going to see that a lot of that with Darren Waller and Foster Moreau during the season. And that is something you want to see because you wanted them to go vertical and, you know, give, give Foster Moreau a chance. But this time, you know, they had a, they had it was Alton Robinson. They had, you know, the Seahawks were, you know, and they're in base personnel because of the 12 personnel, right? Right, right. And you know, it, it put it put them in the position where Zay Jones was one-on-one with the defensive end. <laughs> and of course, Zay Jones won that battle. He found it with a good throw, almost ended up being a touchdown. So I mean, I, I thought Peterman looked he, he played well early on. I think as the game went along, and you I mean, you can make the case whether it's whether he's playing with you know players that aren't as good or whatever, I, I think that he started to, you know, you started to see like why he's behind Mariota and why he's not an NFL starter. You kind of started to see him missing throws. He had a Yankee concept. Like, I mean, Marlon Sarabin was wide open. I put some, a lot of room to run and he just did not see it. Like, I, and I understand that's the concept. I mean, that's the read, you know what I mean? So um, if, if you, if he's missing those, you know, that's kind of scary, especially when he has a clean pocket and it's an open window. Right. And then, um, you know, it had, had some other ones, too. They had the Z curl where he took the interception. Uh, they call that play Z curl where you got the, the a post or a corner from uh, the, uh, the X receiver. And then the Z receiver, of course, runs a curl, obviously. And then uh, you got a little check down that comes out and he didn't hit that well. Uh, he ended up throwing an interception because he uh, kept his eyes. You know, he bird dogged. I mean, so they say when you're staring at something, they bird dogged the curl and then, you know, you got hit 
from the pressure. You know what I mean? So, uh, Peter Man, I mean, he, he's he's a preseason guy. <laughs> you know, you know, you really want to see him out there in preseason because in the season, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna work out. I don't. I don't know. I'd rather see Mario out there. Uh, if yeah. the car went down, definitely would rather see Mario at a hundred percent. 100%. You know what I mean? Uh, the offensive line uh, looked good, too. I, I thought, uh, you know, Leatherwood, uh, I, thought, I thought he looked solid. Uh, he had some instances with some miscommunication that I talked about uh, on the other video. You know, him and Lester Cotton, they just weren't seeing blitzes. I mean, I don't know if anybody, you know, if this Peterman, too, is he not calling out the blitzes? Because the Seahawks blitzed them 16 times. So since the Seahawks blitzed him 16 times, there was a lot of blitzes coming at Peterman's way and they weren't really seeing them, you know? Um, you, you don't know if that's, I mean, it, the communication on the line wasn't very good. You know, it, it is, you know, it, it, that's what come back to like missing Ronnie Hudson and stuff like that or, or not yeah. and, and Derek Carr being out there. You know, the, the line communication was, was not good at all. It was really bad. I mean, even the first play of the game, I mean, um, you know, Brandon Parker is taking one guy in the blitz and Johnson is going inside and let's defense and have a, a free walk to the quarterback. So the, the, it, the communication for the line against some of those blitzes was really, really bad. And that was probably the, the issue where you saw like, you know, Alex Weatherwood getting beat, you know I mean? They're, he's getting beat because they're having communication issues. He's taking one man that he thinks he's supposed to take. Lester Cotton's taking the same man and then somebody's running by him. You know what I mean? Or, you know, uh, uh, Lester Cotton takes somebody, uh, one player, and he doesn't pick up the blitz or they both don't see it. And, you know, Leatherwoods, he's, he's coming out towards the defensive end that's getting chipped. He's, he's, you know, he's getting prepared and is set to take on that defensive end. And they both kind of don't see the blitz. And that's actually on the big throw from Peterman where uh, they, he, they, uh, Jordan Brooks almost pushes through Lester Cotton and Simpson. So, it, I mean, it was, it was a, uh, it was a good performance from the offensive line overall, though. I thought they, they did really well running the football. Uh, Andre James, I thought he uh, he was really good in pass protection. I thought he, uh, he has a really good technique. You can t- kind of tell that uh, he, he's – he's it looks like he's ready to go in pass protection, uh, to be honest. I think he has some – uh, good technique there. It's always play straight with him. He, he on uh, one of the, the they ran like a six concept, a little three step drop. He almost got pushed back into Peterman there. So I mean, it's all it's it's always gonna be a little bit of a play straight issue with him. But I think he was uh, very clean. You know, he's very clean when he was uh he was um out there. You know, pass blocking and stuff. So he was doing some some uh, some clean things. Had really good technique. But you know, when they were at the goal line, you know, they're doing some of those goal line runs. He's getting thrown around a little bit. So. Uh, <laughs> it's a play strength thing, man. It's all, that's, that's what it really is all it's about with him. Does he have the play strength to be a really good offensive lineman in the NFL? Um, he looks like he, he's a legit pass blocker, though, man. That's that's really, um, you know, if it's one thing you want the guy to be, <laughs> you want them to be a good pass blocker. So yeah. he, he's he's legit there. He's legit there. Um, I, I thought uh, John Simpson, I thought he had a really good day running uh, in the run game. I, he looked like he looked exactly the same as he did the year before uh, in the run game. He was getting to the second level and someone's outside zones like really quick. Uh, he was really getting some really good blocks. He opened up some big blocks for Trey Regis late in the game, in the second quarter. So, uh, I mean, pass protection, communication issues with them too. him and Nick Martin off of communications, him and Brandon Parker off. Um, but you know, when it was up, it was him and somebody else, he had a pretty good game. Um, but he, he had the issue of putting his hands back outside again, where he's getting bull rushed. So, um, but, uh, he looked, he looked stronger. He still looked really good in the run game though. He had, he opened up some serious holes and I, so it's, 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 it's going to be, uh, a weird uh a weird look they're gonna they're gonna have to try to take a look at everything that is happening there because you got denzel good who's just gonna be steady but like john simpson really might elevate the run game but he, right now i think denzel could might be a little bit better in pass protection right and might have a better communication understanding of what's going on so yeah yeah but right. uh, it, it, it was a it was a lot more uh positive in the run game for him and the rest of the line um it was pretty good but like some of the other backups like jaron joe smith he was he was pretty awful he had a, he had a bad game you know, i don't think he's a nfl tackle um he's the size uh, of one so, right yeah maybe you know he has a size of one, but i don't know if he's a full-on nfl tackle bro i don't know about that yeah uh, uh he, he was struggling him, him and brandon parker you got some things that you can't teach you know so might as yeah. well see what you got see what we can get out of them 
Um, it was yeah. interesting to me that, you know, um, talking about uh, Simpsons struggles and pass protection. Um, that was interesting. You know, you, you shed some light on that. You, you know, you were telling me about that offline here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, Denzel Good, I wouldn't say is like a great pass protecting guard, you know, yeah. but like you were saying, like he's a, he's he's just a steady. He's like solid NFL guard, you know, yeah. uh-huh. and he's a big guy, you know. So um, what what would it take for Simpson to like elevate past uh, one of those guys on the depth chart? Or is it just going to be like waiting to see if Simpson or incognito goes down and now, and, or I'm sorry, good or incognito goes down and then throw De- um, Simpson into the lineup. Yeah. At this point, you know, with how much he played, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like they're seeing like some serious evaluation with him. I don't know. I mean, it will be more see, you know, I want to see more of what happens this week when they go against the Rams, when they, when they do those practices to start tomorrow. Um, it, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how he works there and where he works at. Is he get with the first team? Is he still really heavy with the second team the whole time? Are they working him in with the first team a lot more? You know, that, that's really what I want to see, especially after that performance. I thought he really had a really good day run blocking. I, I thought he did show that power and that movement and that's that that athleticism that I really liked and that length. It's just more in in the passing game and the communication that they had, man. They just were not communicating at all. So yeah. That's that's the that's what we're gonna miss as Raiders fans. People who watch the Raiders, we want to see the Raiders do well on, on offense. Yeah, that's what we're gonna miss from Rodney Hudson, right? Like that's what Rodney Hudson brought. Yeah, you know, he wasn't really opening many holes at that point. In, you know, you know, last season, going back a couple seasons, honestly, you know, his run blocking kept on declining. But yeah. just like understanding the game and being like a general out there. Like and that also was something that helped Derek Carr out too. So now it's on Derek Carr to really elevate, um, you know, that part of his game, the communication on the line, setting protections, calling out blitzes, and for Andre James as well to step in and, and see if we can see some improvement from him in that area too. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, um, using that play clock. They're going to use that play clock as much as possible to make sure he gets them all set, make sure that they, they're they're in the right spots because. Because, yeah, Leatherway's having trouble with the two, man. They were not seeing those blitzes coming. They were not picking them up, you know, yeah. and they were just acting like it was normal. <laughs> like just four people were going to rush. That's how they were blocking half the time. And there's, you know, people you, were leaking through. People don't, you know, um, give wide receivers enough credit all, either. If you have a great slot receiver, okay, mm-hmm. or even just like a really veteran one, you know, a guy like Willie Sneed, even Hunter Renfro they're in the slot and they're seeing something from that nickel from the safety who walks down where it looks like, okay, you know what? He's not, he's not hiding his intentions enough. Yeah. You know, those veteran guys, those savvier guys are going to point it out to the offensive line and be like, Hey, Hey, watch out for, for this. Right. And when you have guys who are like Dylan Stoner and you know, the, the Tur- Turner kid, is that what his name is? Yeah. DJ Turner. Um, You know, not saying that they're not like great play. I'm not saying anything about that. They're just trying to like, do their job they're like they're focused on like running the right route so they can stay on the team so they're probably yeah. not like trying to like call out blitzes and things like that where a veteran guy would do that so i think that that is an element of missing some of these you know some of these edge rushes some of these edge blitzes that that we saw them miss yeah um you know that those guys are also going to help out um in that area i would say yeah hunter Rufo is really good at that seeing the blitzes and seeing things that are coming and pointing them out so yeah, you're right. You know, right. But you know, even incognito would probably even see some of those things too, and he'll be able to point them out and help out yeah. James while James, you know, learns the game a little bit and gets gets better at recognizing those things. Right. Because James never was wrong, though. So I don't know if he was if he was communicating and those guys just weren't picking it up, or or you know maybe Lester Cotter wasn't picking it up, or you know maybe Brandon Parker because he was never wrong. <laughs> so Andre James, he's picking. He always made the right rotation. He always made the right slide with the line when they wanted to slide, he always did everything correctly. So, you know, he, yeah. he might be set in that, right? Cause that's what I'm saying. He was really good in pass protection. He looked, he looked like he was legit center in pass protection for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it is getting the calls in, you know, uh, to everyone else too. Um, and that's something that's tough to see on film 
obviously mm-hmm. like we're not seeing their mouths move it's not like we're watching nba basketball or anything um yeah. anything else you want to talk about with the offense you know we didn't cover wide receivers or running backs yeah. is that something that you want to talk about uh, yeah i talk about the running backs i know i know that's um you know you know those, those guys they had a really good game so definitely want to talk about that i definitely want to get to them um i thought um trey regas uh he had a really good game better in pass the passing game i thought than the run game I mean, he had some big holes. I mean, he, they were they were opening some holes for him. So all he had to do was just run forward. But when you when you got to the tape a little bit, you you would think that he had the better performance. But when you got to the tape a little bit, he was missing some things like some some of the uh, one outside zone run. It. I mean, he had a clean hole. The John Simpson and Andre James. Uh, James had his best block in the run game at that point. Got a really good push. And you know, John Simpson was able to get to the second level, get to the linebacker. He had a big hole, and he went to the wrong hole in the outside zone. So he read it incorrectly so th- that kind of showed that he was kind of you know he's a rookie right i mean he maybe never even ran outside zone at louisiana so i don't right. i don't know right so it's, it might be something brand new to him the zone run game right the wide zone run game uh but when they when they ran a lot of inside zone though he was really effective so when they ran some inside zone um you know and some you know some gap schemes he was able to make find some holes and, and some, get some good runs so you can kind of tell what he was more comfortable in uh but bj uh bj emmons emmons he had the yeah. sickest run of the day right yeah bj emmons he he, he looked really good I, I thought he uh he looked like he was a really good runner um i don't know about the pass protection or things like that uh that was better that's where trey regis really shined that's why i think trey right. regis might try to find a way onto like an nfl roster because he can pass protect and he can catch right i mean he can pass protect he can catch. He's not scared. He's a little bit of a smaller guy. I, I didn't realize how small he was until I was watching it. Uh, it looks like a little bit of a smaller dude, but uh, especially when you get to the goal line. Uh, yeah, you did definitely confirm that for me, dog. But uh, um, from the tape, he looked like a little, little bit of a smaller guy, but he, he he has good hands, man. He made some good catches. And like I said, he had some really good pass blocking um, during that game, right? But Emmons with the actual pure running, just a pure, pure, pure rushing Emmons was very impressive, man. He has some serious jump cuts. I, his most impressive run, which, you know, I put it on Twitter, his most impressive run to me was a three-yard run because, you know, th- they all got blown up. You see, you know, Andre James and Brandon Parker got blown back. And you see uh, BJ Emmons, uh, he reads it correctly, he finds the cutback on the outside zone, has a nice jump back, a nice jump cut, right? So he can cut back and he gets three or four yards, man. You know, it's, it's, it's not that scrappy stuff that you could see that he could be a, a good runner especially from coming from Alabama, they ran zone all the time. Right. Um, I, I think he has, there's just, I, I think there's more to him um, as a running, as a runner, if you want to, you know, develop a running back. But I think Regis is more, a more of a, a Jalen Richard type, to be honest, you know? So yeah, 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 yeah. If, if there was somebody he's, that. Yeah, he look. you know, it says that he's 5'10 on the team website, which means he's probably 5'9. Um, I, can't, I can't find his pro day. I mean, you know, he's uh it's not a small school necessarily. It's just not the most high profile school mm. Ra- raging Cajuns. Uh, but they, they do have a good football program. They've been doing really good recently, yeah. you know, and, and at, at this point we're talking about Josh Jacobs is a bell cow. Kenyon Drake is the guy who's going to be, you know, a, a super change up back, super changes of pace back. Right. Mm-hmm. What, what does, what does the third or fourth running back need? You know, like what, what's more important there? Is it, pass protection and catching the ball to the backfield or is it being a pure runner because i don't know if there's necessarily a, a, a true need for that you know um so i like regus's chances of making the uh the roster just mm. because his pass protection and yeah. i i saw that uh when i was watching the tv copy like it, during the actual game like i saw like, how many pass protect like he's picking up these blitzes yeah and, and gruden um gruden confirmed it he said he was through three for three in pass protection picking up blitzes so uh during the during his preface press conference on tuesday you're gonna probably listen to this on on wednesday at least yeah so um so i think like the small things the little things okay the the the, the flashy things like running the ball and being a home run threat and everything like that those are awesome but the way you stick around in the NFL on a roster is ball security and pass protection. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can be a really not great runner, but if you don't fumble, okay, and you can pick up blitzes, you're on an NFL roster. You'll be the third or fourth running back on any team. You know, like yeah. 
that's crucial, you know. So I like Regis's chances. I thought that he acquitted himself well. I thought I, w- I was impressed. I didn't watch the – I didn't go over the offensive film like you did, you know, afterwards. But just from the TV copy, I was impressed with Regis. Yeah, yeah. Th- th- that's what I'm talking about. Like, Regis has a chance to make it, you know, make the team, to be honest, because that – the pass protection, he's very trustworthy, too, and he's willing – to willing. put his yeah he's willing to yes you know, put his head in there and try to get some pass protection so i think yeah. that was probably the most impressive part of it to me his tape was the pass protection and his ability to to catch the football um because he he, he had some good throws uh no, no so he didn't have good throws but you know peterman had some some good uh some some check downs to him where he was through throw some accurate balls and he was able to still catch him and you know uh Hey TDL fans, after a bunch of requests, we finally dropped our Tape Don't Lie store with sizes from extra small to 4X. Get one for every member of the family. Show your friends you're a football tape junkie like us and rep your favorite film channel. Link is in the description below. Um, okay, um, all right, so why don't we switch on over here to the offense, or I'm sorry, to the defense, defense side of the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I it, it was... I thought that we saw a lot of blitzes. Okay. And it was just the blitzes that we saw were, were like pivotal plays. Okay. Both ways. Okay. So we all know about the Nate Hobbs blitz. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of work on that. I did an article about it. It's on Twitter, you know, uh, you know, the America blitz it's, you know, very common blitz path, but then also, um Tanner Muse was also activated on that same exact exact blitz path this time they just did it out of a ba- out of base personnel when he elevated and tipped that ball if you if you remember he had that little pass uh, deflection Geno Smith threw it before he got there right that's mm-hmm. the same exact blitz okay so um you know those blitzes obviously worked right yeah. but if you remember early early in the game in the first drive uh Keyshawn Nixon kind of got beat inside on a dig route right uh-huh. that mm-hmm. was over the top of a fire zone so there was another blitz for a, you know that gave up a big gain okay and i think that's a really good call against that blitz too so kudos to waldron the uh offensive coordinator for the hawks yeah and, and then um if the only touchdown the raiders gave up was on a blown coverage right on mm-hmm. another on another blitz so the blitzes seemed like a lot right but he, you know, he probably only ran like five or six blitzes. They were just like pivotal plays in the game, you okay. know. Um, so I thought that that was interesting going back over and watching it. There were also some run blitzes too. So I wouldn't, you know, count those as like pass rush blitzes. Like they were actually like designed run blitzes the, w- the way that um, most NFL teams uh, blitz the strong safety off the edge. Uh, so they did, they did a little bit of that too. Um, so Uh, I just thought that that was interesting that so many of them were pivotal. Uh, So a couple of guys that caught my eye when watching the TV copy. Okay. So I also counted five blown coverages for the Raiders, which is something, you know, it's going to be expected. You're playing with guys who maybe next to you have not really played much next to in practice, but now we're, they're trying different rotations out in preseason. So you could get calls mixed up, stuff like that. Um, Javin white blew two coverages that I saw. Um, And so I thought that he was up and down. Like if you just look at Javin white, he's got the physical profile. Like he's six foot two. He's definitely over two twenty now. He's probably like closer to two thirty. He like, this is what an NFL linebacker like looks like. This is the modern day NFL linebacker. He can run, but I just thought some of the, um, uh, some of the finer details were a little, were a little bit missing. And I liked his willingness between the tackles to strike with his hands and, you know, and try to, you know, detach himself from the blocker and get out. But I just, he wasn't like super effective doing that. Okay. Now there's another guy, 54 Richardson, right? Max Richardson is his name. He's yeah. a, fr- he's a fringe guy. I honestly saw some really good things from Richardson, which, which caught my eye because all the drops on the TV copy, they're off the screen. So uh, when, when I was able to like, you know, get a better view of it, um, I, um, I, I noticed that 54 was, he was d- doing some really impressive, uh, drops, making some impressive runs, covering up for some mistakes of, of Jevin White in particular. So I thought that that was very interesting. Um, I think that just what he showed in terms of the past 
you know, um, uh, pass coverage. Definitely, hopefully, you know, not too many other teams took note of that. If he doesn't make the roster, he can stick on the practice squad and they can, you know, try to figure out a way to keep that guy around because I saw some really good things from him. He is an undrafted rookie free agent out of Boston College. I just checked. Um, look so you, Look at you with your Max Richardson find over here. Yeah, I, well, look, I mean, he's flashing. I'm like, oh, man, 54. Like, okay, now I got to look this guy up because he's he made some good plays in coverage. Okay. All right. Um, uh, also, like Jevin White, you know, he's he's not a, he's not a huge guy, and they, he's listed on the Raiders website as 5'11", 230 or something like that. So he's a shorter linebacker, um, and I, I didn't think that he was, like, super effective, you know, filling in the run game, yeah. which every young linebacker has to learn how to do that. You know, like, yeah. the, the intensity, the physicality of the NFL, it's just such a jump. You know, you hear about guys like – Devin White and Devin Bush and, you know, um, Roquan Smith and all like Patrick Queen, all like the top linebackers. What, what do they always say about him? They're like, Oh yeah, he needs to learn how to use his hands and to come off blockers better. And the inside, like they, they say it about everyone, but you can't, what what you can't teach those guys is like, they can really run, they can move, um, you know, stuff like that. And Max Richardson has a little bit of that, I would say. So he's, he's a guy to keep your, your, uh, your eye on, I would say. Um, Keyshawn Nixon actually had a pretty good day other than that one um, that, you know, that dig route that he, that he gave up, which got called back for penalty anyway. So excuse me for not mentioning that earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, he like coming forward and tackling, he had a great day coming forward and tackling. He made a lot of tackles. Um, he was, he was competitive. He was feisty, probably had his best tape since his rookie year on, on defense. Um, so I think that that's encouraging and it makes sense because, you know, he's, he's getting the go before guys like Bleedy Ray Wilson and Russell Douglas who have been in the NFL for a while. You know, um, I saw some, I saw some iffy things from Russell Douglas. I think that he doesn't look comfortable. Uh, I don't know if he's like, if there's an injury there or something, but definitely not the player that I watched from Carolina last year. And Russell Douglas is coming from the same scheme. So it should really shouldn't be that much of a learning curve for him. So I don't know what's, what's wrong with Russell Douglas. He's running with the threes. And he doesn't look, you know, like super confident out there. And then you remember that Bleedy Ray Wilson, um, and I was making fun of Mr. Magoo for throwing yeah. that to him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bleedy Ray Wilson was beat dead to rights. He he bit on a double move. It should have been a touchdown. Like it should have been a touchdown. I forget who forced uh, Magoo out of the pocket there. Um, but yeah, that was not. I mean, it was just a terrible ball that saved Bleeder Ray Wilson, but that should have been a touchdown. But then they gave up the touchdown on the blown coverage on the very next play. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, those are some of the, some of the things that I took away from it. Um, d- defensive line looked great. Yeah. Yeah. So, so say, uh, what'd you think about uh, Farrell and uh, Phylon? Because yeah. I, I, I watched a little bit of them and I was, I was impressed. Um, Farrell did a really good job um, in both phases, run and pass. Um, I think that it was quicker for him converting, you know, the, his, you know, run defense on a play action into a pass rush. I think that, you know, um, we're see, I, I think we're just like seeing the mental side of it speed up for him a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's encouraging to see because he's always been a very like strong, like a physical player. It was just about some of like the nuance and just like being a little quicker um in the mental processing side so they you know he can be maybe a little bit more effective pass rusher but he also made some good plays against the run too so i think that he had a really good game phylon is legit bro phylon is like like this guy should not have been out there but he, ha- he hasn't played he hasn't played since 2018 yeah um it was, was the dude on hgh for like two years he he's like 315 like all like dude is a bowling ball okay yeah yeah. Still, Stills has no chance of making this roster with guys like Phylon and and uh, McCoy and Quentin Jefferson. Like, nah, bro. Darius Phylon is a factor. He's going to be a part of the defensive line rotation. Do not play sure. this guy another snap for the rest of the preseason. He made the team. Yeah. Like he, like he was like, I'm going. I, he came. He had like a huge chip on his shoulder. You could tell. He's like, oh, I'm playing a preseason game with like these backups. <laughs> Oh, got me, you got me out here with the backups. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I, okay. I'm just not buying that he's 286. Like, no way. He's not. Too, he's way bigger than 286. He ain't 286. Bro. He like he like Quentin Jefferson is like 290. Yeah. And he was substantially larger than Quentin Jefferson. <laughs> yes, he was. 
that was that. Yeah, so, but, yeah, bro. Yeah. He, he was a, he was a difference maker in that. Like he, he, he was, dominated, bro. He dominated. He dominated. <laughs> and that and that's the fun part of like looking at the like the second string defensive line, Carl Nassib. Okay, Quentin Jefferson. Um, our our boy Darius Phylon now. Okay, and Cleveland Furl. Like these guys have all been starters in the NFL, and those are the twos. Okay, so like the depth on the defensive line, like they're they're gonna be coming at like they're as soon as someone gets a wind, just throw throw whoever their backup yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, this be- because be- like there's not gonna be that much of a drop off, especially if we're talking about like a, a 70-30 uh you know uh snap share mm-hmm. uh between the ones and twos. Yeah, man, like and, and I thought Malcolm Kuntz also looked pretty good too. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm 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 excited to see what this defensive line can do, if they can just like really hone in, focus on it, and just get after the passer, um, and just rarely play the run, just just in like third and one situations, stuff like yeah. that. But just get just peel the ears back. I think that this defensive line is is going to surprise some people because if that defensive line aren't even the the starters, like they were dominating like that. The first three drives they were dominating. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's what it was encouraging because you know. Uh, to see like kind of Pharaoh just dominate a rookie like that. Yeah, yeah, he should. He should dominate a rookie, you know, in his third year. So, you know, yeah. he, he dominated Stone Forsyth, man, <laughs> the whole game. So, um, but uh, we'll talk about a little bit of about uh, Malcolm Kuntz, um, you know, playing a little, they had a, just dropping him a little bit more. Yeah. So Pretty, uh, the thing with um, the reason why Kuntz dropped, uh, I think it was like two or three times, they were they were on blitz, blitz calls. Okay. And it was like, you know, um, a type of blitz where they're supposed to peel on the running back or they're supposed to drop into the, like the, uh, the passing lane, to, you know, cause the pressure's on the ball's going to come out hot. So like just drop it to the passing lane and Gus Bradley's going to call stuff like that when he knows it's going to be like a three-step drop game, you know, and, and the defensive ends have no chance of getting there. So just send four guys up the middle, drop the defensive ends, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I think that that's great practice for him a because he didn't miss like Jerry green missed. And he gave up that touchdown because he didn't get the, like, he didn't realize that, oh, I'm supposed to peel on this running back. Yeah. Right. Whereas, you know, um, when you see Malcolm Coons, like whenever there was a blitz on the opposite side of him or something like that, and he had to drop, like he did his job. And that's encouraging because if Malcolm Coons ever does need to play linebacker, you know, if Tanner Muse goes down or they feel like, you know, he, they need him versus a certain matchup because he's bigger. Um, yeah, that's encouraging because it shows like at least it's not like too much for him the mental side of it yeah uh, just judging off this you know small sample size obviously and you know i'm not gonna say he looked great in coverage but at least he know, knew what his job was you know and and uh the ball came out quick because they were blitzes anyways right yeah um so so i i was encouraged by malcolm Coates. you know i think um he he, he definitely wasn't like strong you know, like when the defensive line, or I'm sorry, when the offensive tackle got their hands on him, mm-hmm. didn't really show too much. But, you know, you got some get off off the edge. You got some, you know, uh, burst for a guy maybe who can stunt um, inside and stuff like that. So he'll just keep on uh, polishing that stuff up. And, you know, maybe down the stretch, he can be a factor. But uh, just judging by all these other guys that are in the mix, I wouldn't like expect him to get like a ton yeah. of snaps early on. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, man. Any other thoughts on the defense? Um, no, that's that's just about it. Uh, I would say for me, um, yeah, they didn't throw down the middle of the field barely ever, you know. So Trayvon Morg never got targeted. I can't really, you know, say much about the safeties. They were they were just really never uh, targeted in the game. So I uh, don't have too much to talk about with those guys. Um, so yeah, so you know we'll just have to wait until this Rams practice, and we'll see what Sean McVay has dialed up for them in the game, and and hopefully we can give the listeners uh, a little bit more to talk about the next time we show up. So yeah. yes, 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 sir. All right, uh, so you know that'll wrap it up for us. You know, make sure, like I said, guys, make sure you always subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. You know, make sure you uh, subscribe on iTunes now too. You know, or you download on Spotify. You know, this is an audio podcast, and make sure you always, you know, check it out on SB Nation if you are listening there from silverandblackpride.com. You know, always make sure you check us out here and check us out every Wednesday and Friday. And of course, you know, with our instant reaction show right after the game. So uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL. 
at BD Williams 18. Make sure you hit that merch. You know what I'm saying? Go get you guys a taped online sweater, a shirt. Yeah. You know, so make sure, yeah. You know, Mine's coming. Me. Mine's coming next week. So okay, okay, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Product <laughs> placement, you know? <laughs> Product placement, right? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So make sure you guys go and get you a shirt and uh, all that good stuff. And then, you know, make sure you guys keep following our articles. You know, we keep writing. Check out, check us out on civilblackpride.com. All right. Any last words, BD? That's it. Appreciate you guys' recognition, huh? Peace. Later. Later.